Hi, it's Clint Hanson here and Callum Robinson from Vector Health. Today we're just going to talk about back pain. Uh, so many people get it, um, so many people experience this in their lifetime. Uh, one of the things that I've invested in in my own development as a coach is going and spending time with Stuart McGill, who is someone that I've admired um, for a long time. And he is one of the most influential people in the last probably 20 years in terms of uh, back pain research and understanding uh, the, the spine and how to how to correct movement patterns to um, get well not get rid of pain but to minimise pain. So one of the things that we look at when like especially when I'm looking at someone with back pain, especially when they're trying to be active, is really try to understand uh, what their pain is, why they're getting it, what it feels like, how often it happens. So from my point of view, that's if you if you ever came and spoke to me in terms of in like sitting down with me, that's the first thing I try to do is spend quite a considerable amount of time just understanding where you get pain and why you get it. So that would be the first thing that I would say that's the most important part of determining how then you go about correcting whatever movement might be um, disturbing um, pain sensation in your back. So if we look at someone, say Callum and myself, have both had back pain of different origins over time. So it can be caused by a number of different factors. So it can be caused by instability in the, in the spinal column itself. So that might be where you, you're getting rotation, you're getting a, a bending action that isn't, um, that isn't done particularly well. You've got stiffness in parts of your spine, you've got desiccation of the discs, um, you've got disc bulging. There's so many factors that can come into why you might get pain. And it's really important that if you listen to someone speak about how they've gotten their pain and where it is and how it affects them, a lot of the time it really helps you pinpoint and go to ask, um, say a doctor or physio, you can go to them with a, with a plan of look, this is why um, I think this is happening. Uh, can you look at this? Can you can you see if this is um, the way it is? And then, do you have any um, do you have any other suggestions for why this person is experiencing back pain? Because if you're looking at an active person like Callum and myself, the most frustrating thing, or the thing that most frustrates most people when they come and talk to me, is that the way that the pain experience or the, the experience of their pain gives them in terms of lessening enjoyment of exercise. So that's that's probably my number one, is just make sure that we're listening to somebody and understanding how the how pain is affecting them. Alright, so let's say Callum is extension intolerant, which means that when he goes to spine extension, so let's look at extension is, so we're here, we're pulling into extension. So for argument's sake, like a deadlift or a squat, extension, especially in a deadlift, often um, what happens is you go into spine extension, which is not what you want, you want a neutral spine. A neutral spine is your natural curve. So this test here just looks at how the spine goes through flexion and how it goes through extension and what happens to each individual joint that exists between each individual vertebrae. So if we got Cal to think about pushing up through here and creating a flexion response in his back, and then you check with that person, how does that feel? Yeah, good. Okay, so that, that's okay in terms of that feels okay. And then what you wanna do is get them to drop through here. So we get him to drop, and then we're trying to get him to tolerate how much extension does he tolerate here. If he gets any pain, instructed to stop. So in this position here, um, what we're looking at is how stable is the spine, how much does it move on an even arc. So each vertebrae needs to be um, equal in terms of its ability to bend. Um, and at the moment that's not happening. So what we need to do is think about what is happening when he's deadlifting. So given that you don't want to make someone go into a lot of pain in a session but you want to replicate their behaviour, then we start talking to the person about does this hurt to go through this motion? So what we want to do here is try and create as much extension as you can with that pain. Does that hurt? Uh, not there, not in the final position, but in the transition. Okay, so about, about halfway this? through, about right there. Okay. Between there, I get a bit of pain yeah. there before I get to okay. there. Oh. So if you get um, catching, um, 
then that's an indicator of we've got to try and find out where the pain free motion is and why that is pain free and then start working from there on building tolerance to go through this position. So Cal's saying from here and down, you get a bit of pain, but once you reach the final position, it's okay. And then some people might get, I get to here and then I've got pain all the way through until the last part of extension. So obviously you don't want to make that person replicate pain behavior all the time. So that's what we look at with a test like this. So if you're testing yourself and you get pain through a certain portion, then you know that there's a problem in that portion and then it's like, well, how do you go about fixing that? All right, that's good. Okay, so it's really important in this particular part, like we, we look at some of the behaviors that cause pain. What's really important is if you're sitting and watching this at home, you can't go away and self-diagnose yourself and go, oh, I've got this problem. So with the, with the application of, so someone like McGill's techniques, what I found is it's so individual. So that's why I tend to spend so long getting to know the person and really trying to understand what is happening. So fragment take, we're using Cal as a demonstration here to give people a bit of an understanding, but um, I haven't spent all of my usual time with him right now to go over everything. I'm purely using him as a demonstration. So we're gonna pick on a few little technical points with him lifting this roller, which obviously doesn't weigh very much. But what you're looking at is the movement pattern because if you add load to it, generally what happens is everything exaggerates from here. So we've, we've got pain through this quadrant, this quadrant here, the lower part of the back, but out to the side, probably more towards say maybe SIJ joint, the sacroiliac joint. So when he does a deadlift, so he's gonna go down to the bottom position, gonna hold that position. So what you want here is neutral spine. And so when he lifts, so the first point of, the per first point of movement that he moves with is here. So the spine is stacked. I'm gonna get a little, a little demo spine. The spine is stacked like blocks on top of each other. Easiest way to look at it from a normal person, everyday point of view. So we've got a little block stacked on top of each other with all this cool stuff joining it together. Ligaments, tendons, muscles around it to support. And that's where the, the, the objective of your core, being all of the muscles that exist around your trunk, is so important because the objective is to stiffen this part here so that it provides you support. So what's happening here is some of the smaller muscles here are deciding to try and act as an emphasis to, to lift the weight. This part from here to here should support his, his body in terms of his legs to lift. So it's a stiffened response, whereas he breaks at a certain point. So we're talking about break point. So I look personally at what the break point is. So yes, he bends at his hips, does pretty well there. But as soon as he bends here, he's putting extra pressure on the parts of where he's getting some of the pain. So a lot of the cues then for that is how can we then teach him not to do that because he's doing that with a foam roller, not even weighing a kilo. If we put 100 kilos on a bar and say, he did now do it, the response is a lot more severe because you've got all of that force going through here like this. So we're extending, so spinal process sits here, we're extending, we're doing that. So we're moving like that, so we're squashing essentially one portion of the disc down pretty hard. Whereas we want to hold this position here and we want to bend at our hip joints because that's the strongest joint that you own in the body in terms of the amount of muscle supported and that sort of thing. So that, that's, that's what we want to get the person to do. And we want to hold a stable or a neutral spine posture, not bend, not flex, stable. And that's the, probably the most biggest part of the challenge in our job is how to get someone to do that and every single person's different. So the exercise that I give to one person could be completely not the right exercise for the next person um, and purely because maybe you might not understand that as well as someone else so therefore we use a different variation to get exactly the same result. And that's the whole point like of Vector Health in itself is it's a tailoring, it's the care that we provide to someone on an individual supported level to make the best thing appropriate to you. And that's what I strive to achieve in my own practice as a, as a coach, and then I'll just strive to sort of pass on to everyone that works in our facility. Okay, now I've got Cal and Broomstick in a funny old position here. So we use this exercise sometimes to teach posture um, with, um, with trying to come back from like maybe some extension intolerance in terms of back. So trying to teach a person how to hold a neutral spine. So with this exercise, we're gonna get him to go into like a traditional Romanian deadlift position. 
So he's going to go down, he's going to keep his knees quite soft though, so quite soft. So then we're going to get him to hold that position here, and then we're going to get him to imagine that the bottom of the stick pushes into the ground, pushes through here, and then he's going to stand up tall. So stand up tall, and then he's going to do that a couple of times. So imagine then that he's stamping his heels through the ground, and then he's standing up. So stamp the heels down, stand up. Good. So what this does is stamping your heels through the ground. It's a, it's a cue to try and make the glutes work as the prime mover here and to stabilize it here. So most people that we work with, there's nothing wrong with their muscles. Their muscles are there and they work, but they don't work at the right time, the right force production. So that's what we aim to correct a lot of the time, especially with guys like Cal who's strong, plays football, you know, he, there's nothing wrong with all the muscle he owns, he's just got to learn how to use it in a more effective sense. Well, and then he stops and then he drives. So heel stamp, drive. Does that feel different? All right, good. So, big thing, don't, don't sometimes focus on what muscle you own, focus on how it's used. Because as I said, you feel in the key parts, muscular structure that we're looking for, he's got all of this right stuff there, it's just that He's got that break point, which means that we're not using what we want to use or need to use to create an effective pattern, therefore pain sort of creeps in, and that's what we're trying to get him to eliminate. A lot of the time you don't need hands-on, hard massage or anything like that to correct the behavior. You can use the hands-on stuff from a physio point of view, and that's what our guys here that might do. They might use that to soothe pain or to um, decrease, um, decrease muscle sort of guarding or tightness, but um, but then most of it is done in the corrective stage. So understanding the body, understanding anatomy, and making sure that you get the person to understand how to move, because that's a really good cueing item. You might look at exercises that attempt to try and draw him into that position and up with one hand to try to stop his rotational value here and to try and stop his break point where he can actually have one hand behind on his back so he can feel if he's pulling up so, because that's what it looks like to stand up, it's a very slight move, it's pulled like that, where the pelvis will tilt, and then the lumbar spine will arch, and in that position there, it's very hard to make glutes work. So if you get back pain in squats, especially lower back pain, you get people that say your glutes don't work properly, and then they try to demonstrate that to you, but it's very hard because they might lay you down on the ground and get you to try and demonstrate glute activity, but for some people they find that tough to understand because they're like, but it happens when I'm squatting or deadlifting. So for some athletes, if we can show you in that position there, this is how it's meant to feel, then I find that some people cotton on to that and get it a lot quicker and will really commit to that process. And that's the individuality that we spoke about before and they're getting that right, right from the start so that then you have a more successful outcome.